don't think there was really a Satoshi way of coding. Again, the, the, the coding was just self-taught hairball. It was uh, completely obvious. Uh, he would even, uh, you know, be humble and admit that it's uh, not the best organized code. He even would solicit help, uh, for example, to port it to Linux and get, uh, get it working under Linux, which we did. He uh, was getting a lot of requests from various developers to uh, add this or that optimization to the miner, the Bitcoin miner, that was inside Bitcoin Core. Historically, the wallet, the node, the miner, everything was in one single application. On the management side, Satoshi didn't want to deal with uh, all the latest optimizations in mining, so I actually took the miner out of Bitcoin Core and separated it into a separate piece of software called CPU Miner which uh, then became GPU miner, which then is now used in all of the various ASIC mining uh, that's used in Bitcoin mining today in year 2024. Not really a Satoshi way of coding uh, other than it, uh, it's messy and he would not uh, shy away from admitting that it was messy. The Satoshi way of management was never got angry. He would never have arguments. He would uh, just state a position and the way that you knew that he agreed with your position was that he would merge or not merge a patch and make it available in the next version of Bitcoin. And so there again, it was just like my history in Linux where Linus Torvalds would do exactly the same thing as an open source maintainer. Linus would merge or not merge a patch and that's the way that the open source benevolent dictatorship works. And uh, Satoshi just naturally stepped into that role. He did very well in that role, I thought. So Satoshi as a manager um, was uh, pretty effective, uh, but uh, Satoshi as a coder, I think, uh, you know, he's more the, the a beautiful mind type uh, lone genius in the woods. When I was at Georgia Tech, um, one of the things that uh, I noticed as a computer science major, all the computer science majors are very, you know, egotistical as a general lot, very, uh, uh, you know, think highly of themselves as coders, etc. And we would notice that some of the other disciplines, the chemists, the biologists, the physicists, they all had to do coding as well but they didn't do it as a profession. They were just approaching it as, I have to do this coding to solve my physics problem, my biology problem, my chemistry problem. And their code looked a lot like Satoshi's code. It's a, I am a lone genius, you know, uh, the physicists being math geniuses, and, but they don't know programming. They don't know modularity. They don't know unit and integration testing and all these other things that computer science majors uh, go to school to learn, but they, they got to punch out code anyway. And so the code's going to be messy, less modular. It's going to lack a lot of the software quality attributes that we normally are familiar with. But a physicist doesn't care, a biologist doesn't care. They just want to run their biology or physics simulation. Satoshi was the same way. He, uh, he just cared about the outcome and cared about the cryptographic security of Bitcoin. And so the modularity of the software was largely irrelevant. The crypto uh, security hardening permanence was what he cared about. In theory, anyone else could have uh, come up with the same idea as Satoshi and pulled all those primitives off the shelf and created Bitcoin, but no one but him had that uh, original inspiration.